We hear you, we see you, and we cannot help you. Democratic Party 2022. You think so? Even with all the ex-Trump admin guys joining companies like Blizzard? Yeah, of course. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit about that. They're just there to make money. It's unbelievable the gender confusion that is being trying to, you know, thrown upon the children of the United States of America. And people will say, you know, well, what does Jesus think about uh, Disney? What does Jesus think about uh, these teachers that are leading children into a state of confusion when it comes to their gender identity? Well, it's actually very clear. Jesus said in Luke chapter 17, verse 2, that it'd be better for a person to tie a millstone around their neck jump into the sea, and a millstone is a large, large boulder, jump into the sea, then it would be to hinder and hurt a child. And uh, I'm telling you, this is serious stuff. This is serious stuff. We've got to get in front of it, and that's why on day one, when I get in the U.S. Senate, I'm going to be presenting what's going to be called the Millstone Act. Any school district in America that teaches critical race theory or woke sexuality will have its federal funding cut off. We cannot have school districts teaching these things to a generation of children. Otherwise, we're going to lose an entire generation. And they're planning on it, man. They're planning on it. They're doing it right now. And this is how people are treated who speak up. You got to prepare yourself. Prepare yourself to fight. Thank you, Mr. President. I didn't expect to wake up yesterday to the news that the senator from the 22nd district had overnight accused me by name of grooming and sexualizing children in an email fundraising for herself. So I sat on it for a while wondering why me? And then I realized because I am the biggest threat to your hollow, hateful scheme. Because you can't claim that you are targeting marginalized kids in the name of, quote, parental rights if another parent is standing up to say no. So then what? Then you dehumanize and marginalize me. You say that I'm one of them. You say she's a groomer. She supports pedophilia. She wants children to believe that they were responsible for slavery and to feel bad about themselves because they're white. Well, here's a little bit of background about who I really am. Growing up, my family was very active in our church. I sang in the choir. My mom taught CCD. One day, our priest called a meeting with my mom and told her that she was not living up to the church's expectations and that she was disappointing. My mom asked why. Among other reasons, she was told it was because she was divorced and because the priest didn't see her at mass every Sunday. So where was my mom on Sundays? She was at the soup kitchen with me. My mom taught me at a very young age that Christianity and faith was about being part of a community, about recognizing our privilege and blessings and doing what we can to be of service to others, especially people who are marginalized, targeted, and who had less often unfairly. I learned that service was far more important than performative nonsense like being seen in the same pew every Sunday or writing Christian in your Twitter bio and using that as a shield to target and marginalize already marginalized people. I also stand on the shoulders of people like Father Ted Hesburg, the longtime president of the University of Notre Dame, who was active in the civil rights movement, who recognized his power and privilege as a white man, a faith leader, and the head of an influential and well-respected institution and who saw black people in this country being targeted and discriminated against and beaten and reached out to lock arms with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. when he was alive, when it was unpopular and risky and marching alongside them to say, we've got you to offer protection and service and allyship to try to right the wrongs and fix injustice in the world. So who am I? I am a straight, white, Christian, married, suburban mom who knows that the very notion that learning about slavery or redlining or systemic racism somehow means that children are being taught to feel bad or hate themselves because they are white is absolute nonsense. No child alive today is responsible for slavery. No one in this room is responsible for slavery. But each and every single one of us bears responsibility for writing the next chapter of history. Each and every single one of us decides what happens next and how we respond to history and the world around us. We are not responsible for the past. 
We also cannot change the past. We can't pretend that it didn't happen or deny people their very right to exist. I am a straight, white, Christian, married, suburban mom. I want my daughter to know that she is loved, supported, and seen for whoever she becomes. I want her to be curious, empathetic, and kind. People who are different are not the reason that our roads are in bad shape after decades of disinvestment, or that health care costs are too high, or that teachers are leaving the profession. I want every child in this state to feel seen, heard, and supported, not marginalized and targeted because they are not straight, white, and Christian. We cannot let hateful people tell you otherwise to scapegoat and deflect from the fact that they are not doing anything to fix the real issues that impact people's lives. And I know the only problem with this is the Democrats don't do anything to fix the issues in people's lives. What do I have to point to? I have fucking nothing, man. You overpromised and you underdelivered, and you won't deliver with the power that you do have. What do you want us to do? There's nothing we can do to fight now. You have taken every argument out of my hands. I couldn't be a democratic shill if I wanted to. They're pathetic fucking losers, and I hate to say it. I know it's frustrating for a lot of people to hear, but it's the truth. They didn't overpromise, LL. Well, yeah, I mean, I say that because they delivered even less than their pathetic promises. No, that hate will only win if people like me stand by and let it happen. So I want to be very clear right now. Call me whatever you want. I hope you brought in a few dollars. I hope it made you sleep good last night. I know who I am. I know what faith and service means and what it calls for in this moment. We will not let hate win. Thank you, Mr. President. How are we going to stop hate from winning? How are you going to stop hate from winning? The new argument liberals are trying out, and I think this is so funny, we should probably just start with it. Biden confronts a host of problems he can't do much to solve. We hear you, we see you, and we cannot help you. Democratic Party 2022. We see you, we hear you, we cannot help you. Taxes have got to remain low on taxes. They've got to be high on those upper middle class people. Oh, you make your money with a small business slash you're a doctor, lawyer. You get to pay 50% of your income in taxes. You're an independent contractor. Oh, you're an idle fucking rich clod who makes your money from interest and capital gain. 15%. We see you, we hear you, and we wish you could be quite less annoying. This is one of the most incredible headlines I've ever seen. And like, let me just say this. I don't even think they believe this. I don't think they even believe it, but they think you are stupid. And by the way, if this is true, then what's the point of voting for Democrats? I I don't understand how you could ever say this. Even if you believe it, this is an inside thought. The presidency holds no power, which is why we spend billions on this election. Yes, exactly. <sighs> okay, you smart guy. Let's see you take a crack at it. <laughs> <laughs> I am very pessimistic about elections right now. I think this is a referendum on Joe Biden, as, as midterms always are. When people say presidents lose seats in midterms, what they really mean to say is that Midterms are a referendum on the president. And every president we've had since FDR is outer dog shit. That's what they mean to say. Hey, at least blood baths are warm, yeah. Looks refreshed from the Easter weekend. You could say reborn. Also, congrats on him on being Ger Geralt of Rivia. I knew that was a goal of it. Well, first of all, Geralt has white hair. He could never have these dark, flowing locks. Our poor boy, our poor boy Geralt of Rivia is pitch white. I was just about to mention FDR. How could you actually prove he was alive? It's funny how they keep voting for you in your administration. I mean, like, you know, I wish I could say LBJ, but, you know, he had anti-communism brain. So he put us into the Vietnam War, which absolutely tanked his popularity. And that is, and that is, uh, what Joe Biden is trying to do is tank his popularity by getting us involved in this Ukrainian war. Incredible. All right, let's read this article just because it's funny as fuck, and then we'll get into some better content. But I just saw this, and I had to comment on it. Incredible. There's just not much President Biden can do about it. 
There's not much he could do to curb inflation. Wrong. Raise taxes on the rich. You raise taxes. You put in controls on price gouging. You invest in supply side. One of the leading causes of inflation in our, in our economy is the pr- increase in housing prices. Start building public housing. Stay. If Joe Biden went out there and said, I intend to build 20 million public housing units, that would be shock and awe for landlords. They'd be scared shitless to raise rents. Good morning, everybody. Impeach Joe Biden. Couldn't agree more. Mick Secular, thanks for 200 bits. There's not much he could do to stop migrants from reaching America's southern border. He absolutely can. Have a Ellis Island style border where people can register their intent to migrate to the United States and then they can go to, they can fly in or drive in to uh, approved uh, migrant uh, uh, or walk in, uh, approved migrant centers whose purpose is to help people resettle, register get a social security card, get it, you know, get you organized into a union of the trade of their choice. Like there's, there's all sorts of stuff that you could do. That's what the Democrats used to do. The Democrats used to do when, when an Irish person walked off the boat, Tammany hall was there with a, with a handshake and lunch. And they said, where are you from? Okay. Let's, we'll take you to the beneficial society for your, uh, uh, your community. Bam, bing, bet. Now, I'm not saying Tammany Hall was perfect, but the point is that there was actually at least an outreach attempt. But no, this guy's got fucking nothing. He's behind 1860. Or reduce crime. Incredible. Criminologists everywhere are shook. Biden has determined that crime is perfectly random and there are no causes to crime. Or to make vaccine resistors get shot that would hasten the end of the coronavirus pa- pandemic. Every single thing he just said is wrong. United Airlines got their entire company to get the vaccine. How'd they do that, chat? How'd they do that? How did United Airlines get their entire fucking employee, every single one of their employees to get a goddamn vaccine? They said, we'll fire you if you don't get it. They mandated it. And 99.99% of people got it. I think 30 people got fired out of like 45,000. So every single one of those things is wrong. There's not much he could do to compel cooperation from defectors with his thin Democratic congressional majorities. I, he doesn't even try. He sucks them off. When Kirst, Kirst, Kirsten Cinema blocked Build Back Better, but and they passed the bipartisan infrastructure bill, he invited her, and her plus one was a lobbyist. She brought lobbyists, corporate lobbyists, to the signing ceremony. These are not. I'm not exaggerating. These are truth facts. Here. Bipartisan infrastructure uh, signing. Oh, God. <laughs> infrastructure bill. Let me see if we can find it. Uh, I, I'd have to go. Uh, cinema is corporate lobbies, million dollar woman, pharma and finance cash, uh, Biden's agenda in the ballots, lobby kicks in the high year. I'll have to find it. I have to find it. But the point, of course, because these type of, of stories get buried, but they, they, and of course it exists. He brought lobbyists. I'm so upset about, upset about Biden and Democrats. I feel so doomer recently. And when I tell my parents I'm not voting for a corporate Democrat, I'm getting triggered voting blue no matter who I get. I get a lot of shit and scold about how much your votes matter. All right, I'll tell you how it works. Voting is quite simply uh, uh, meaningless uh, as far as your personal morality. Your point is to persuade others and browbeat others to vote the way you want them to vote. That's it. But when you're in the ballot box, it's private. And you could do whatever the fuck you want. If pretending like voting for corporate Democrats gets them to vote for progressives, you pre- pretend to do that. If it doesn't, you don't give a shit. And when you go into the ballot box, it's a private act. And what do you do in the ballot box? Here's the dirty little secret. You do what you think will cause uh, the best possible outcome. That's it. That's it. And you and once you push that button, you fucking leave. You don't give a shit. It doesn't matter that much. It's not that... It's, it's a, it's a five minute exercise of power. There's no need to get into some sort of mental prison where you're like, oh my God, who do I vote for? Uh, who gives a shit? You go in there and you make a, you make a utilitarian decision. You make a consequentialist decision. If, and it, here's how you do that. Here's how I do it. If I could find any issue whatsoever that distinguishes the candidates, I vote for the candidate 
that has my preference on that issue. So I'm not voting for Republicans, okay? That's never going to happen. I'm not trying to say to be an accelerationist. What I am saying is that we on the left need to be so goddamn, need to stop being so goddamn accommodating. They're not accommodating to us. Centrists are not accommodating to you. They have no problem causing a Republican to win. So you need to learn how not to be so accommodating to them. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Here's a prospect journalist to back up your cinema claim. Joe Biden invited Kirsten Cinema and two lobbyists who killed off entirely of his common sense tax reform as special guests of the White House for today's infrastructure bill signing. That's how serious he is about his own agenda. That's the risk you run by crossing him. There's nothing he can do to compel it from Republican adversaries who would rather aggravate than alienate his burdens. Then stop trying to work with them! Stop spending your first year kissing their ass! I'm sorry for yelling, but come on! He spent his first year in office. He spent his honeymoon flating the Republicans. In other words, there's not much Biden can do about the heaviest weights depressing his political standing, which has remained stuck in the avalanche warning zone for months. I can tell you this right now, chat. I love this. I love it. I want them to lose. I want them to lose because left wing people, center left people in this country have got to recognize that the American constitution is toilet paper and it needs to be thrown out. And maybe, maybe when Democrats lose every election, even though they get more votes, they'll finally say, hey, maybe this constitution ain't so good anymore. So his party faces the likelihood of a substantial November election defeat that hands the House and perhaps the Senate to the GOP. Biden and his aides will spend the next seven months trying just the same, using the White House as the bully pulpit. You can't use the White House as the bully pulpit if you're a soft-hearted lib. If you're a weak, pathetic capitulating compromiser you're not going to use it as a bully pulpit and there's never been anyone more pathetic and worse of a speaker than joseph robin at Biden. i think he may be one of the worst presidential speakers we've ever had bush was way better even with all his stumbles he had a certain folksy charm he could crack a joke joe biden sucks thoughts on this video oh i can't wait to see this oh we've already watched these actually <laughs> we've already watched these Executive authority and international diplomacy. Marginal benefits represent the best they could hope for. With executive authority, Joseph Robinette Biden could, could give amnesty for all illegal immigrants. Joseph Robinette Biden could cancel all student loan debt. With executive authority, Joseph Robinette Biden could cancel your, could rate, uh, so I said cancel student loan debt, give amnesty to all illegal immigrants, could legalize marijuana at the federal level. Those are marginal? That's marginal. Absolute fucking batshit baby brain bullshit. Matty MP, thanks for the 14 months. He confirmed the ability over a year ago. I'm sure he's working on that debt. Yes, he did. It recalls the 1960 era lament of a beleaguered President Lyndon B. Johnson who complained that the only power I've got is nuclear and I can't even use that. Give me a fucking break. Give me a fucking break. Proper parole. Thanks to the 20 gifted subs. Seriously, that's insane. You're the best. I don't know why Twitch is broken. It's not given. There it goes. It had a hard time figuring out who it wanted to give it to. Joe re actually thinks weed is a dangerous gateway drug that medical use needs to be studied more. Joe actually thinks migrants are a threat to peace. Joe actually thinks students caught up in predatory loan schemes need to learn to pay their debts. He's a fucking loser. I know. So this is just totally out of context and comically ahistorical to the point where Harwood is a fucking... Cr what a dipshit. By the way, Lyndon Johnson passed... Medicare and Medicaid, he raised the minimum wage like seven times, he uh, uh, um, did the war on poverty, he passed the Civil Rights Acts, like what are you talking about? He had one of the most left-wing justice departments and uh, Supreme Courts during his presidency. What the fuck are you talking about? Mike, I thought I was going to owe taxes here, but got $80 back. What better way to use that than give subscribers? Oh, nice. Mike, what do you think of this tweet? Baby brain bullshit. Bad take. This rich person isn't a socialist because they're rich and own expensive things. Good take. This rich person isn't a socialist because they have the means to, but don't financially support revolutionary movements and organizations, and they don't hold revolutionary ideas. Okay, so this doesn't apply to me. It doesn't apply to Hassan. And next. We are doomed for the next eight years easy. No Democrats is going to be able to candidate we need that person to be. Next. 
There's an alternate timeline where G George W. Bush got hit in the face by both shoes and was subsequently knocked into a coma never to wake up, and Dick Cheney ended humanity by nuking Russia. Jo Ronald Reagan signed a sweeping immigration reform bill into law. The bill made nearly 3 million illegal immigrants eligible for amnesty. Even Reagan did it, but Joe simply can't, of course. The fucking loser, man. Oh, did I close my... Okay, never mind. Frustrated fellow Democrats insist the administration could get politically healthier with better messaging. That might sound persuasive had the president's party not lost House seats in 26 of the last 29 midterm elections over more than a century. Biden's foremost... Whoa, but wait a minute, chat! How many times was there a Republican president over the last century? Huh. Well, let's, uh, let's go back 100 years. So who is president? Uh, so we have um, Calvin Coolidge. Democrats lost seats in Calvin Coolidge's midterms? Okay, then we had Hoover. Uh, did the Dems lose seats at Hoover? I don't know. I don't remember. Hoover. Hoover. <laughs> Herbert Hoover. Uh, so it would be, it, it would be what, 30? 30 would be the midterm? So he definitely lost seats in that. Uh, not Hoover. It would be the 1930 congressional election. I can type, I swear. Don't look at this. Don't look at me. Don't perceive me typing. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the Dems made huge gains, obviously, because it was a Great Depression. So the Dems still were in the minority, though. The Dems were still in the minority. Incredible. By one seat. Holy sh- By one seat? Wow, that's incredible. I didn't know that. They, came, they had a narrow one-seat majority. During the four months between those elections and the start of the 72nd car, 14 members-elect died? And the Democrats gained three additional seats in the special elections called to fill those vacancies, thus gaining control of the House. Wow! That's incredible! Wow! Over the ensuing... Okay, this was the first of four consecutive Depression-era House elections in which Democrats made enormous gains, achieving a cumulative gain of 174 seats. Over the ensuing 64 years until the 1994 midterm elections, House Republicans would be in the minority for all but four years. Chat, that's called the New Deal Coalition. And Bill Clinton killed it. So it went from the... I mean, Jesus Christ. Biden's four most recent predecessors with varying communications acumen all lost control of one or both chambers of Congress in the midterms. Because they, people are rejecting them because they're... Both parties' presidents, whether it's Trump or Obama or Biden or Bush, they're the same politician. They serve the same donors. They do the same shit. They have the same foreign policy. They make minor tinkering. And they spend all their time waging bullshit culture wars. AV, thanks to the 14 months. Biden's starting position wasn't great, but he had a majority in both the House and Senate. And he's done pretty much nothing with that majority. I mean... People have had it better than him, but presidents have had it a hell of a lot worse than him, and he did less. Opportunistic, opportunistic Republicans say Biden needs to shift ideological directions. If he shifted any more to the right, he would basically be to the right of Donald Trump. They fault his policies radical, far left, socialist. Like what? For creating the conditions turning voters against him. Inflation provides their strongest evidence. Liberal and conservative economists share a growing consensus that Biden's 1.9 trillion rescue plan last year pumped too much money into the economy. Absolute bullshit. Absolute bullshit, you fucking dipshit morons. Absolutely wrong. Inflation is not being caused by the rescue plan. Inflation is caused by the fact that we have supply constraint. We're not building any houses. We're, we can't manufacture shit and have it brought over here. We have all these shortages that were the result of the pandemic. And these liberals believe in markets, so they let incumbents price gouge as opposed to providing actual supply and resources. Where is inflation happening? Energy. What are we doing for energy? Drill, baby, drill. Please, oh, Saudi Arabia, will you pump more? What are we doing for housing? Oh, please, please, builders, will you build? What are we doing for transport? Fucking nothing. Tinkering. Standing around, hoping it gets better. And by the way, the federal funds rate is what? 1%? You're complaining about inflation, but yet the federal funds rate is, oh, I'm sorry, 0.5%? So we have monetary stimulus going on right now. Why? Because we don't want our stock market to go down. So we need to make sure the rich can borrow money at 0% with 8 fucking percent inflation. They get to borrow at 0.5% and inflation is 8%. Incredible. 
Mike, as an economist, that's partially right. There's also supply constraint and the fact that firms are price gouging. All this is causing inflation. All these people are now expecting higher inflation, which leads to higher inflation. Yeah, they should raise the fucking federal funds rate by 500 basis points. Slap people across the face. You want inflation? How about that? From around 1980s to 1920s, Republicans were more progressive than a huge party shift occurred with Dems adopting pro-progressive mantle in the 30s due to FDR channeling progressive Southern Union, Southern Unions, laborers, movements, as well as the West and Midwest. The Dixiecrats wanted lots of welfare spending for the impoverished South, hence their progressive leaning. I, yeah, I mean, the Dixiecrats are very complicated. They're not, they're not analogous to the conservative South and Democrats of uh, Southern conservative Republicans of the day. That money accelerated economic recovery and helped restore millions of jobs. But by supercharging consumer demand, it also worsened inflationary pressures already building in the U.S. and around the world as the economy emerged from COVID-19 shutdowns. We build less houses today than we did 20 years ago! We're building less houses? What do you mean inflationary pressures? We're building less houses now! Yet the White House can't fundamentally alter that reality now. No shit, they didn't even try. Efforts to smooth gnarled supply chains use the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to expand oil supplies or waive air pollution regulations to produce more fuel with less gas can modestly offset rising prices. Events abroad, from a new COVID shutdowns in China to developments in the war, can swap them in a flash. Oh man, see I was told, I was told by the globalist right that if we move, if we fire every union employee in America and we send them over to China and we send their jobs over to China, that we would be more globally stable. When in reality, the supply chains are even more fragile. And now we sit back and produce nothing but debt. And we're surprised that we can't buy the things. I changed apartments where I work. and got a 6% increase because they couldn't attract anyone with less than that. Change jobs, everybody. Definitely. Most rich people have no shame because they don't have to participate in society the way we do. They can escape whatever they want and live and ignore others to their heart of content. It seems like America is trying to turn the whole country into a tech country, which is not going to pan out because of agriculture and many other jobs that need physical... What? What the fuck are you talking... Even the tech shit requires... You can't go on the internet without a computer. Whether it's a phone or a personal computer, you need a goddamn computer. Outside voices such as eminent Democratic economist Larry Summers. Holy fucking shit. Prescribe more potent options such as lifting tariffs on Chinese exports. Agree. Shelving Buy America requirements that limit competition and government purchasing. Oh, I know. Let, but uh, let's, uh, this is stupid, by the way. Let us fucking be more dependent on China. Let us be more dependent on uh, Malaysia. Let us be more dependent on slaves uh, and expanding immigration to loosen a tight labor market. I agree with that. Each of these options, however, carries toxic political side effects. I don't think anybody cares. I, I think not one American in the entire fucking country really cares about tariffs on Chinese imports. At this point, at this point, the only people that might object are labor unions. Is, does, does fucking Joe Biden care about that? This was the first year I owed taxes to the federal government. I think just barely moved up a tax bracket, but with everything being more expensive, I'm not ed better off, even with higher pay. Yeah. Other issues have made Biden the victim of circumstances as presidents often find illegal immigration, which has paralyzed Congress and bedeviled chief executives for decades, presents the quintessential no-win problem. And no, it doesn't. It's so fucking easy. But he's too much of a dickless coward to do anything about it. Even before he... I was promised immigration reform! Chat, can someone find me some of the, uh, 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 you gotta vote Biden for harm reduction posts? Can someone show me the you gotta vote Joe Biden for harm reduction posts? I think I saw one, and, and uh, if you could remember those, if you could find one of those on Twitter, show me that you gotta vote for Biden. It had like a whole list of things he was gonna do. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Do you guys remember this? To his the chagrin of core supporters, Biden has made only incremental immigration policy changes. Now, as the administration prepares to lift COVID restrictions on the border that health conditions no longer justify, electorally vulnerable Democrats have joined the pile on from the right. Wait a minute, I thought it was all the socialists. Today, I learned courage comes from the dick. Thank you, streamer. Oh, Botswala, you're welcome. Obviously, the courage comes from every, anywhere. The frightening upsurge in murders also began in 2020. Trump was president! For reason, criminologies will debate for decades. So did the spike in fentanyl deaths. Of her firearm regulations from Washington, such as last week's executive action on ghost guns, Biden's substitute for congressional inaction can't change much on the American streets. Is ghost guns even what's killing people? 
are ghost guns even what's being used? I mean, it's probably just Saturday night specials, cheap handguns, as usual. Nor can the president's rejection of defund movements targeting local police departments as the early struggles of New York City Mayor Eric Adams made cl make clear. Biden could receive political help from others. Democratic Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia could finally deliver the decisive vote for parts of the president's stalled economic agenda. The Federal Reserve could raise interest rates skillfully enough to calm voters' inflation fears without precipitating a recession. You gotta do a recession. There's going to be a recession, folks. You're not going to turn off this inflation without a recession. That's just the reality. That's just the reality. It's the business cycle. This is an old school business cycle. They're going to raise, they have to raise interest rates quickly. And it's going to cause the stock market to go down. It's going to cause people to lose their jobs. That's the only fucking way. And the best time is to do it is right now. But he's going to let it fucking, he's going to let high inflation ride for a year, chat. True leftists need to rebrand our name and be able to show receipts in the caucus party as well as come together all over the globe to like the right wing dogs. We should call ourselves the humanitarian party. I mean, housing prices still going up while mortgage rates doubled. That's because there's no supply. U.S. housing inventory is at an all time low. Ask anyone who's been trying to buy a home this year and you'll probably hear a similar story. There just aren't enough available properties to go around. Sellers have been hesitant to list their homes since the start of the pandemic, and now buyers who wish to purchase a home are frequently landing in bidding wars. For example, the GI Bill was very progressive and redistributive. Yeah, is this what you're looking for? Let me see if I'm... Let me see. I'm sorry, but you're not a leftist if you're not voting for Joe Biden, by the way. <laughs> Fucking globe emoji. Oh, wow, the globe emoji will let us know who the real leftists are. Anyway, you can be a leftist and still realize the reality of our two-party system and how fucked it is. If you want your leftist policies to pass, you vote for harm reduction and push for change afterward. I mean, this is kind of what I'm talking about, but I wanted a list. I wanted, there's like, I remember a post, maybe it got deleted because the guy got exposed as a sex pest, but there was one post in particular where it was like, the differences between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, socialists have to do it. And it was like a bunch of policies that supposedly Biden was going to do. What labor unions are telling their members about Brandon's accomplishments? One, Davis-Bacon update. Two, expand project labor agreements. Three, pension relief. Four, saved scabby. Five, joy silk doctrine. Six, ban captive audience meetings. Not sure if that will make up for a recession. No. Those are all great. Those are all great things. Except they're too little, too fucking late. That's not going to change the rank and file. This is the reality of what we're seeing. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. Here's rent. In the pink, wages in the purple for minimum wage. This is monthly salary, monthly rent. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. Rent has gone up 50 fucking percent in two years. And, yeah, exactly. Supreme Court, by discarding the constitutional right to an abortion, could jumpstart more. <laughs> Women already vote overwhelmingly for the Democrats. They already vote overwhelmingly for the Democrats, especially single women. What's your fucking point? They're not, they're, and, and secondly, uh, and I hate to say this, I hate, really hate to say this, but a lot of people are not in the childbearing age anymore. It's not a personal concern. A lot of conservative women who vote are not able to have children anymore. So they, their hypocrisy is not relevant to their lives anymore. And they're very self-centered. Good luck getting through the application process for a lot of these rental units. Most want you to be making three X with the rent is in most cities. Yeah. Pathetic. The cost of my house that my fiance and I just bought that isn't even finished has already gone up in price 25000 in a month. It's insane. If we had waited a month, we wouldn't have been able to afford a house. Congrats on getting in there and winning the game, man. Congrats on winning the game. As an increasingly radical... How much do you think Hassan's house is worth now? How much do you think Hassan's house is has gone up in value since he bought it? You think he's made a million dollars in capital gain? Man, I would trend on Twitter for owning a house to make a million. Jesus. <clears throat> I'm just, I mean, like, I want to devalue Hassan's house. Can we build the gigantic social housing across the street with a tram station right next to his front door? Hey, Pan-Africanisms. I mean, that seems like a something that some people do. Did you cover Elizabeth Warren's op-ed? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, Republicans want to frame these upcoming elections about wokeness, cancel culture, and militant left wing. Standing up for inherent dignity of everyone is a core American value, and Democrats are proud to do that every day. Uh, when we show the pain, understand the painful economic realities facing American families and convince voters we will deliver meaningful change. To put bluntly, we fail to use the months remaining before the elections to deliver on more of our agenda 
Democrats are headed toward big losses in the midterm. Here's the reality, chat. The Democrats may be headed toward big losses anyway. All right, chat, I have a question for you. Let's assume you have six months left in your job and you're going to get fired. No matter what you do, do you go into your work and do everything you want to do? Or do you go into work and cuck yourself and do nothing of what you want to do? Even in the scenario where Democrats are going to lose no matter what they do, they should be even more radical. They should do everything they promised their base. I bought a house. Uh, you get a t Twitter follower. What's that mean? An average house in West Hollywood went up 21.3%. So his $2.5 million mansion is likely $3.3 million now. Hassan has made, just from owning his house, more money than I've made three years streaming by quite a lot. <laughs> it's not even close. I'm the biggest dipshit for not buying a house now. My parents were right. Last year, they were like, Mike, buy a house. And I was like, I don't really want to. I don't know. I think COVID's going to have a recession. I don't want to buy property in the middle of this recession. That never happened because they pumped infinite money into the economy. My little three-bedroom house in the East LA suburbs in a so-so area, not exactly the best area, went from 110K to 450K. It's insane. Congrats, man. You don't own any student loans anymore then. Congrats on, uh, congrats on not owning any debt. That's not a 3% interest. I bought my house in 2018. It's worth 75K more than what I bought it for. I fucking hate... All you house owners, honestly, like I legitimately am mad at you. And it's not, and I realize that I'm the wrong one here. I should be mad at the Democrats for not building public housing or doing anything to start fucking housing uh, uh, builds. Jesus Christ. Trouble for homeowners right now is if you sell and cash out, now you have to pay some crazy price for a new home. You don't sell. You mortgage it. You get a second mortgage. And then you plow that second mortgage into whatever your debt is. You pay off all your credit cards, you pay off all your student loans, and you have fun money at 3% or 4% interest. So you can easily, you can easily cash it out. You don't have to sell your house. You just take a mortgage. The Illinois Housing Development Authority gave me a mortgage where they gave 60K for the deposit and paid off my student's loan when I signed my mortgage at 2.5% interest. Nice job, man. This is not financial advice. No, obviously, I'm not giving advice to anyone. Actually, I lied. I just checked what Zillow is worth 539K now. Nice, man. My parents uh, are like, we could just move some cash from our investment to buy a house and we'll be your landlord. We could sell at any time, by the way. Wow, it must be nice to be boomer. First of all, I mean, listen, I hate you, but putting on my uh, uh, securities arbitration hat and uh, I'm not giving you financial advice, but hypothetically, if somebody's parents will buy a house for them, they're going to die one day and they leave their shit to their kids. So if you have rich boomer parents, you're a rich fuck too. Uh, the first time I'm a, a house buyer on a single income and it's literally soul crushing, it's impossible to get to the market now unless you have an insane offer above asking, which is not possible for first time buyers. My dad made fun of me last night because he knows I'll only be able to afford a house once he in I inherit his house. You should say to your dad, haha, that's really funny. Um, anyway, so who's going to be making your end of life decisions? Anyway, uh, wow, it looks like you signed this do not resuscitate order. Wow, DNR, I'll make sure this gets notarized and uh, registered. Oh, you thought you were going to spend your, your years at an expensive nursing home? I'm going to find the most rundown, one-star fucking nursing home. I'll get you out of here in no time, flat. My parents are like, the only thing you're going to inherit is our debt. Good luck, you can't inherit debt. If somebody tries to get you to pay your parents' debt, you laugh in their face and say, fuck you. <clears throat> Time is running short. We need to finalize a budget reconciliation deal, making giant corporations pay their share to fund vital investment. <laughs> I don't even want to read this shit. Anyway, but history... The, January 6th insurrection? Give me a fucking break. Nobody cares. Absolute stupidity. All right, fuck this chat. I'm, I'm done ranting about these idiots. Pretty, pretty good. I wanted to watch this. It's how Z became Putin's new propaganda meme. I wanted to see uh, the lib coverage of this. 5th, 2022, Russian gymnast Ivan Kuliak Banana stepped grabber, on the podium at the International Gymnastics Federation World Cup in Doha, Qatar. He won the bronze medal in the parallel bars. Next to him was Ilya Kuftin, the gold medal winner from Ukraine, and silver medalist Milad Karimi, representing Kazakhstan. The situation was already tense. Russia's invasion of Ukraine had begun just nine days earlier. 
and Kuliak decided to show his support for the war by attaching this symbol to his uniform, three pieces of white tape forming the letter Z. By that time, the Z was becoming an obsession in Russia and a controversial symbol worldwide as the new way to signal approval for the war and loyalty to Russian President Vladimir Putin. Since the invasion began in late February, the Z has shown up on billboards in St. Petersburg, t-shirt stands in Moscow, auto rallies, and flash mobs created for social media. There's even this photo posted on the website of a children's cancer hospice, showing sick children organized into the shape. By the way, this is totally normal for Americans. We do this shit constantly. Like, are you kidding me? We have all sorts of shit like this. Outside in the snow. The letter has been used to vandalize the homes of Russians who oppose the war and is now banned from public display in several countries. So how did this symbol wow. become shorthand for supporting Russian aggression? The letter Z was first spotted in late February 2022 on Russian military equipment gathering at Ukraine's border, along with other painted white markings like V and O. At first, what these symbols meant was unclear. Z isn't part of the Cyrillic alphabet, the writing system used in Russia and Ukraine. The Z sound in Cyrillic is written sort of like a three, and V looks like the Latin letter B. But once the invasion began, most analysts agreed the markings were for tactical purposes, likely to prevent confusion on the battlefield, and potentially denoting where specific forces were attacking from. The Russian military didn't explain what the markings meant, until intrigue around them grew online, and people in Russia saw the chance to use the Z as a tool for propaganda. One of the most common ways the letter Z is being given meaning in Russian is by Latinizing it in the Russian word za, which means for, and incorporating it into slogans like za pobiedo, za prezidenta, za nasha. So there was an attempt to fill it. That's Aglaya Snetkov. She's a lecturer on Russian foreign, security, and domestic policy at University College London. You increasingly have pictures which are just so absurdly oh, no. staged. It's obviously fake but it sort of doesn't matter. So the pictures of the kids, for example, who like can't even read around. So chat, so I've heard about Putin support, you know, being in the 70 or 80%. Here's Gallup data. Gallup research data. March 24th, 2003, 72% of Americans support the war against Iraq. Biden approval up 13 points to 71%. So people are like, I can't believe those ru bloodthirsty Russians supporting Putin. Americans did the same thing when we invaded Iraq illegally and unilaterally. We ch like they literally ch renamed French fries to freedom fries. And anybody who spoke out against the war was thrown out of society, even by libs. And Michael Moore is still Michael Moore is still a pariah for this event. A lot of people generally dislike Michael Moore, and I don't know why anymore, because there was a lot of effort spent in demonizing him by the right wing. <laughs> and, you know, I'll be honest with you, he's not an attractive man. Like, he doesn't look hot. And people are not used to people that are not made for TV on their fucking TV. As a, also, as a fellow not that hot man, I totally understand his pain. There's a certain expectation that people on the television are going to be, or movie screen, are going to be super hot among Americans. So, like, just attacking him for his, his appearance and demonizing him as much as you can was a goal of the right. We like nonfiction, and we live in fictitious times. We live in a time where we have fictitious ele election results that elects a fictitious president. We, we live in a time where we have a man sending us to war for fictitious reasons. We are against this war, Mr. Bush. Shame on you, Mr. Bush. Shame on you. He got booed. So that's what happened in America. So it doesn't surprise me that there's been a similar rally around the flag of Russians who are just, you know, it's so disgusting. Like Americans should be held accountable for the war in Iraq. Are they? Absolutely not. Funny thing, he's on the Academy these days, went full live. No, he was, well, I mean, he he was a Bernie Sanders stan, okay? He he was a Bernie Sanders supporter 
He shit on, you know, I appreciate that. When the chips were down, Michael Moore went to the left. When the chips were down, Michael Moore went to the left. That means a lot to me. Everybody who said, nah, fuck, fuck Joe Biden, fuck Kamala Harris, fuck Elizabeth Warren, and went to, Joe, uh, went to Bernie Sanders, you deserve credit for that. Right. They obviously have no idea what the Z they're holding means or anything like that, but it sort of almost doesn't matter so long as you throw it out there. Click on these slogans hashtags like for Russia and for peace, and you'll find tens of thousands of posts on Instagram alone, many of them originating from the Russian Ministry of Defense. The political technologists in Russia, in Kremlin, and in and around the Ministry of Defense have decided to jump on the opportunity and reinfuse the meaning of those obscure symbols. Kirill Avramov teaches classes on Russian and Soviet symbolism and propaganda at the University of Texas, Austin. Oh, Avramov told me go. the point of these memes is to turn the Z, and sometimes the V, into something cool. He translated a few of them. So Patsanov is like a street slang for, for the boys. And it says, Silov v pravde, power is in truth, which is actually a quote from a post-Soviet blockbuster. So Silov pravde. They're picking already familiar slogans. Post-Soviet, you mean capitalist, capitalist movie? Like what? Post-Soviet? What the fuck is happening? Also, somebody gifted a bunch of subs and you're beautiful. San, San, Storm81, uh, you're incredible. You gave 40 subs. What the fuck? What the fuck? How do you have gi 60 gifted subs? What the fuck? Thank you, man. Thank you. You're the best. To post Soviet Russians oh, and putting into those extra support uh, in the visuals and then recreating those in flash mobs. People are like, fingies, fingies, fingies. And, fingies, fingies, and I'm like, bro, we're at 41117. One strategy for turning Z into a patriotic propaganda icon has been connecting it to Russian glory of the past. In particular, the Soviet victory in World War II. The Soviet Union suffered devastating losses defending itself against invasion by Nazi Germany. But they were ultimately victorious, with the Red Army fighting its way back to Berlin and defeating Hitler, establishing the Soviet Union as a world superpower. The Great Patriotic War is still a potent symbol of heroism and glory in Russia, and is honored each year on May 9th, or Victory Day, the anniversary of Germany's capitulation, with massive demonstrations of modern military might and remembrance of ancestors who were killed in the war. The historical trauma is immense in Soviet times. There was a huge sacrifice on the part of the Soviet people, and those are some highly symbolic events. This ever-present historical awareness makes World War II imagery a direct link to patriotism and presents the opportunity to connect the nostalgia of Soviet heroism with Russia's current attacks on Ukraine. Take this meme posted to the Russian Ministry of Defense's Instagram on March 4th, 2022, which, as of early April, has over 21,000 likes. It shows a Z superimposed over a black and white photo of Soviet soldiers on one side and a photo of modern Russian soldiers looking back on the other side. The hashtag says heroes. The photo on the left is a famous image from the original Moscow Victory Parade of 1945 celebrating Germany's surrender. It's still the largest parade ever held in Moscow's Red Square, organized by Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin. The image shows Soviet soldiers carrying captured Nazi flags and banners before destroying them, and has been used in Soviet and post-Soviet patriotic propaganda ever since. So every Russian person would recognize that immediately. The Z is paired with a slogan. Hey, why Zapapieta wouldn't you recognize that, chat? That, they won the war against the Nazis. Why wouldn't Westerners recognize that? Tim Daddy the Third says, I actually look like this. Nice. Victory. And is styled in black and orange. I look like this, Chad, uh, Chad meme. You look like this, soy face meme. Which, other than plain white, is the most common way the Z is displayed. The pattern represents the color scheme of the Ribbon of St. George one of Putin's favorite propaganda symbols. Its origins trace back through hundreds of years of Russian history as a symbol of military glory. At the end of World War II, Stalin used the ribbon on a medal awarded to all Soviets who served in the war, including civilians. The ribbon, which everyone knows is, you know, if you see it, it's the Russian military might, and it's a signifier that you're Russian. The ribbon of St. George is now handed out every year ahead of Victory Day, 
and is a central emblem of the celebrations. Invoking the memory of the glorious past in order to play this propaganda trick, right? Equating this war with this one in terms of justness and legitimacy. Beyond emerging as the new mark of loyalty Fuck, that video to Putin, is of the captured the, of all those captured Nazi banners and units just being thrown down into the dirt. Oh, that's some good shit, man. 16 months of Romeo losing all my Gamba money. Okay, first of all, he just doesn't like to catch the treat I bought. <laughs> like, he just doesn't like this treat that much. He doesn't like catching it. I don't know what's going on. I gotta get him his... He likes soft... Likes, they're like peanut butter cookies, basically. ...doesn't hold any individual meaning. And that seems to be part of the strategy behind it. And that, I think, shows the way in which Putin's propaganda sort of works. He throws things out there, sees what lands, and then goes with that. The symbol just became recognizable to the explanations, which I call post-rationalization, is that this is all planned, you know, the Z's and the V's stand for victory, for Zelensky, for you name it. The advancement of so many alternative explanations adds energy to their state propaganda. Whether or not any Very of these explanations end up strategy. sticking... The well, three distribution win. Thanks for the seven months. Tanks and trucks to memes, then flash mobs around Russia to pro Putin demonstrations around the world shows that as a symbol's visibility grows, so does its power as a tool for propaganda. Really interesting. I went from 1.1 million to 200k. Wait, what? Oh, from Romeo? Oh. Oof. 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 They fired them. Cops detained a crying eight-year-old boy? Yeah. I mean, of course they did. So it doesn't surprise me that you have so many people that support the war in Russia. The United States of America was the same fucking way in the war in Iraq.